before I when I went through the process. Uh, I did it a little different than I normally do in the fact that I just kind of sat back for a few days or two or three days and um, I did make some phone calls. I did receive some phone calls, um, but I tried to be patient. Drove me nuts, by the way. I, mean, I was ready to get going and get moving. Uh, and then I got on the road and went, some, went and saw some guys uh, and then went and visited with Brian. Um, I met him in San Antonio because he was out there recruiting and we got to spend about five hours together. Uh, and I really enjoyed it. You know, I've known Brian um, for a long time, even before I really didn't know him. When he was the defensive coordinator at Georgia and I was the offensive coordinator at Auburn, we played against each other and, and uh, that was a big game. Um, studied a lot of their video. They were very, very good defense, very disciplined, very tough. You know, we knew it was gonna be a hard battle and, and uh, ended up being that way. Um, and then obviously I hired him at, at Atlanta, uh, which I was really excited about. Um, the fact that in, in a phone call and that, and that there was interest there. Um, and then he stayed there and, and coordinated the defense there. Um, and then I remember talking to him um, up at Notre Dame before the game. Um, visiting about his kids and where they were at and how everything was going. Uh, and then, you know, when I got, got the chance the other night to sit down and talk to him, and, um, he immediately wanted to go to the board and, and uh, you know, talk about defenses and what he believes in. Um, the thing I like is he has strong beliefs uh, in what you need to do schematically, strong beliefs on how you go through the process and what type of environment you need to create and, and live with, uh, and I think they match up perfectly with what I believe in. And, you know, it was really easy after being there with them for, for five hours uh, to make this decision. Really excited about it. Uh, it's already been fun in the three days that we were here as a staff. Uh, we kept the coaches in off the road um, so we could work on defense and offense. Uh, we will go on the road in the morning here for a couple days and finish up the recruiting. Um, and then get to signing day. But with that, I'll just introduce Brian Van Gorder. Thank you, Coach. Uh, I'd just like to say it's a real privilege to be a part of University of Louisville, and uh, I'm especially happy to join Coach Petrino's staff. Again, as Coach mentioned, we've known each other a long time, uh, and I believe his football philosophy and culture is one that um, I can do well in. It's, uh, you know, built on high standards and expectations. Um, it's built on intelligent training and preparation. And really all the things that, as Coach mentioned, I really, really uh, believe in. Uh, I want the people of Louisville to see our defense play and recognize them as being very sound, very fundamental, uh, and have a special spirit and enthusiasm for what they're doing so that people recognize that it's really, really important to them. Um, I look forward to all the challenges. There's many challenges ahead. It's challenging right now. We're hitting it on the run and, and uh, trying to organize uh, installs and, and doing all that. But look forward to all the challenges and we'll draw on, on a lot of experience to kind of you know, stay ahead of that. Um, still trying to meet and get to know some of the players here and there. So there's a lot of work on the personal side of it, but uh, I couldn't be more excited. So at that, I'll open up questions. I guess initially, you know, what type of defense do you anticipate running? You know, what type of package, like a 3 4, 4 3, or what's your philosophy on that? Well, I've got background in, in, in both uh, 4 3. I kind of grew up through uh, uh, the Jack Del Rio, Mike Smith system of uh, four down, and then I was fortunate to spend a year with Rex, Rex Ryan up in, uh, in New York. Uh, so I feel knowledgeable in both, and I think good coaching is really doing a great evaluation of your players and finding out what your players are best at doing. I know you guys, you hear that, but I think there's a place for both. I think that uh, your ability to be multiple is important in today's game. Um, I think that, you know, you just, you know, how you control it and contain it. So again, it remains mm -hmm. likable and learnable for the players and you remain consistent in, in and terminology and the things that you're, you're working so again it makes sense to the player so we'll evaluate uh, we're prepared to in spring ball give a little bit of both four down three down and again 
<clears throat> through the evaluation, find out what our players can do, uh, what our high production players are best at, and we'll kind of build scheme around that. What sort of challenges do you anticipate with uh, some of the older guys, a third defense coordinator in three years? Well, I think that's tough, and I think uh, in this situation, just you know, listening to some of the terminology from a year ago, um, it'll be it'll be quite quite different. But again, that's where good teaching comes in, good organization, uh, repetition, so they hear the same same thing over and over. Uh, I believe in teaching football that it's not a long dissertation when you describe a technique, a fundamental. It's quick talk between a player and a coach. So we'll keep uh, we'll keep working it there. And there's nothing like uh, a player with the, with the tools that you give him. Nothing like him having success. And so it'll be important here early on. It's, it's like you said, another system that they have some success because success means they're motivated and, and trust and want to learn. How do you think you've changed as a coach since the last time, the last job you had as a defensive coordinator at Notre Dame? <clears throat> Well, you know, I, I think it's been healthy for me to kind of sit back and look at the uh, evolution of, of my career and maybe where I was at Notre Dame. Um, I respect greatly the, the coaches there and the players there and what we did. There's, there's absolutely no regret. Having said that, um, we're always learning as coaches, so I look at it. I'm as critical as anyone on myself, and hopefully draw from that experience, and from that experience comes wisdom. So there, 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 there's some, some great learning from that, from the Notre Dame experience. Building defenses in the modern day with a run and shoot, you talk about the challenge and how the game has changed in the last 10 years, and how do mm. you adapt to that? Yeah, it is, it is, really, it is really changed. And, <clears throat> and when I said being uh, a little bit more multiple is a good thing, um, and I think the big thing in college football has been the develop, the, the running game the, uh, with the quarterback and uh, how, we, how we number uh, put numbers against the running game in the box and such as uh, you had that quarterback and numbers don't work well for defense. So schematically developing good defense to stop a running quarterback is good. And then, um, you know, the RPO game that has become so big in, in college ball. Uh, so you got a numbers issue, and now you've got a challenge relative to uh, a hard line play action, which is, is really difficult in college ball because offensive linemen can can uh, run up the field and, and, and block second level guys. So you know there's there's great t challenge. Um, football's always evolving, so you're always looking at it, you're always changing with it, and I think that uh, my knowledge of it has grown tremendously uh, since coming back into the game. And, uh, but it does, it does cause a lot of uh, schematic build and an inventory and a game plan that's got to be well thought out. The way the game has changed also tackling-wise, how difficult is that in terms of being and teaching, being more careful in terms of the kinds of hits you can put on an offensive player? Well, I don't, I don't really feel that as, as much. I think that you know, when you start talking about target areas and such, you just got to continually reinforce that uh, through the guys. It's just a, a matter of good eyes and a particular target area. Uh, we still want you fast. We still want you aggressive. You know, some of the issues of the bang-bang plays at times that happen so quick on a defensive player, I think, are difficult, uh, you know, in our game today. College football, it's really critical that you do a good job because not only is a guy removed from the game, he may miss a portion of, a, of the next game. So, you know, crown of the helmet and those things, uh, they can't hear that enough. Um, giving them specific a specific target and where eyes have to be have to again be reinforced over and over and over. With the uh, early signing period, are you going to have much of an opportunity to recruit or get guys in that, that you would, would want them out? There probably no. aren't a lot of time or space. No. <laughs> are you are you going to be on the road? road or? <clears throat> I'm not. Okay. Defensive, defensively, it was sort of an up and down year uh, for the Cardinals. How close do you think? This, this unit is? I know you're just meeting the players to reaching their potential. Well, you know, just again, I can't speak uh, specifically about players. I just don't know know them well enough. But if I look at um, the personnel and uh, the roster, it I think we're, we've got a lot of young players. 
So I think we've got a young, lot of young players that will get, be getting, for their first, first time, an extensive amount of, of playing time. So usually you get an enthusiastic player that's in those circumstances. So for us, it's kind of fortunate that we'll, we'll build with some young players that uh, haven't been entrenched in, um, in another defense, and they're just hungry to play you know, for the first time. But I think it's a well-constructed roster that's really important to me as I look at it. Um, some good youth for us to really build, uh, build upon. So yeah, I'm excited about it. As a defense, you know, looking at your some of your, your you on the sidelines video, you certainly bring a lot of enthusiasm in the past. Is that something that we can expect? That same kind of fire that that that, that has sort of made you famous. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I I was a middle linebacker, and uh, I guess that middle linebacker thing kind of shows up every once in a while. But uh, you know. I've calmed down a lot, but hey, uh, you know I love competition, and when you coach and teach and put a lot of time into players and they have success with those teachings, uh, it's it's exciting. I don't ever want to lose that. I mean, I'm excited every day I show up. One thing I know, I'm I'm going to be relentless with them. I'm going to show up every day, and and they're going to feel an enthusiasm. I love what I do, and I love servicing them and and helping them get better. What do you think is this thing? How have you spent your first few days here, whether it's look, unveiling a, a scheme with fellow coaches or looking at tape of this next season's opponents? You know, playing? I haven't gotten into next season's uh, uh, opponents at all. So, you know, just looking at some of last year's uh, defense that correlates to what, what we do has been kind of the main event. And then a lot of defensive staff time um, in between media obligations and human resources and such, uh, trying to get as much in as we can in a short period of time. What do you think has sustained your enthusiasm over the years? I mean, you're now, what, three decades into to coaching. What, what, what sustains that? <laughs> you know, I, I think, uh, you know, I'm older, I feel young. 